So today we are going to be breeding some of the rainbow fish in the fish room. Rainbow fish are one of the predominant species I've been producing since I got in here. You can see we haven't finished building the fish room, but we've started spawning a lot of our rainbows. And today I'm going to teach you the whole process of like how I do it. I used to overcomplicate it a lot. It's really, really easy species to make and to breed and they look fantastic and they're one of my favourites. So we're breeding today the Praycox, which is the Dwarf Neon Rainbow, Turquoise Rainbows and Bosmanis. Excuse the lighting, I'm going to have to use a flashlight to show you these because we haven't finished the lighting in the fish room too. I will get some good videos of them, but we can start down here I guess. Down here we've got some of the Praycox. These are the Dwarf Neon Rainbows. They stay smaller than your normal rainbow fish. They're a little bit more popular because when they're young they look really, really good. In my opinion, I've had them for a really long time. They're a cool fish. I love them a lot, but they're a bit boring compared to some of the other ones. So, in this other room, we've got so many rainbows. I think we've got four tanks with rainbows. We've got a lot of Bosmanis. You come down to this tank. This is another one of our colonies. You can see why they call them rainbow fish with this fish. These are definitely my favorites. Once they get to this adult size, it does take them quite a bit to get to this size. These would be about a year old. Once they get to this size, they look fantastic. My friend Don has this huge fish tank and he has rainbow fish. He's got Bosmanis and turquoise and no kidding, they're like this big, like you could fill at them, like they're so big. Down here we got another colony of these beautiful Bosmanis. So these ones are even bigger. These would be two years old, that, like that boy there. The way you sex them is males will be a little bit more colorful and females will be a little bit more dark, just less colorful. There's a male there and a female there. That's a big female. So you can see there, like clear difference. With all these rainbow fish, I'm not gonna go through the fine details of sexing them, like do your own research. I'm just gonna show you the process of how I breed them. And then finally, these are the turquoise. They're not gonna look that good on camera, but they look really, really good when they're under a good light. They don't look that fantastic right now. You can see a really good looking one there. I'll also show you the babies so that you don't think I'm like, just make up. <laughs> We've been breeding a lot of them. The fry are very, very small. There'd be about 50 in here. These are the turquoise rainbows. We've got, oh, there's probably more actually. A lot of little babies. Same in here, we've got some more in here and more up here. There you go. So you can see we've got heaps of these babies coming through. What's the process? Basically, you can see in all of our tanks, you would have noticed we had mops. In the wild, the way these breed is right on like the crack of dawn, like the males and the females will start breeding every morning. What they'll do is they'll lay their eggs in like moss and reeds and stuff like that. Every morning they lay eggs. If you've got them in really good conditions, they will lay. So the lights will come on, they'll breed for like three hours lay a bunch of eggs in moss or plants or whatever. I keep the colony in a tank like this for 10 days. So I'll put the colony in with the mops. This is the exact setup I would use like in one of these tanks. So there's some crushed coral because we're using rainwater. So that just hardens the water a little bit. Then we've got our mops. So these are just made out of acrylic yarn. Very easy to make. Just look up on YouTube how to make spawning mops, you'll find it. And then we've got an introduction date. So these came in on the 12th of September. After 10 days, on the 22nd of September, I took them out of this tank, so all the adults, and I just left the mops and everything in there. The only thing that changed about this tank on the 22nd of September was I removed the adults. Then, you can see on the 29th, we started seeing babies. So these started breeding a little bit late, so I just write down a hatch date, and they start to hatch out, as you can see. With these rainbow fish on the other side of the room that I just showed you, what we're gonna do is leave them in there. We'll go check their tank dates. I think today's the 7th of October. So these went in on the 3rd of October, as you can see. So they went in on the 3rd. What we're gonna do is on the 10th of October, or maybe even the 11th, you can see they're spawning right now because it's the morning. They just look so good. We're gonna take all these adults out, reset them up in another tank for breeding again, and I'll show you how I raise all the eggs that start hatching out of these tanks. I guess we'll leave it at this. And I'll see you guys on the 11th of October or the 10th of October when we remove all these fish and start hatching out the babies in these mops. Okay, so it's now been, I don't know, like a week since we last spoke to you guys about our rainbow fish breeding. So now it's the day where we're gonna pull the rainbows and put them into their next tank. And then we're gonna let the eggs hatch in the tank that they're in. 
come down here, we've got some of the prey cocks, which I showed you before. So it's very dark in here still. I found that they do like the dark quite a bit. We've got another colony in here. So what I'm simply gonna do is just like, get a few containers of water. We've got another tank set up for them over the other side of the room. I just put a torch on here. It's a brand new net. And just catch out these, these fish. There we go. Perfect. Gotta make sure we get all the fish, because what happens is if you miss one and it's just sitting in your tank, it's just gonna have a buffet as everything starts to hatch. So you gotta make sure you get everyone. Must be everyone. Oh, it's gonna be very hard to see actually. Let me have a look. There will be eggs in this mop. I've gone around and shot some B-roll of some of the eggs in some of the mops, so you guys will be able to see that. There's the colony. Such a pretty little fish. But yeah, they're still very, very young. They've got a bit of growing to do before they're like really, really productive. So then what I'm gonna do, I'll bring the torch with, is I've got another breeding tank for them set up. These are on the same exact water as the other ones. I'll just grab them out. Just grab these and start putting them into their new breeding tank. And we'll let the eggs hatch out and we'll have lost a little baby rainbow fish. So we'll go around and do this for all our colonies and see how many eggs there are in all the mops. Then we'll let them hatch out. Okay. Now we're under the big boys. These are a little bit larger. These are the Bosmanis or Bosmanis or however you want to say it. But you can see all of our friends here. There's gonna be a lot of eggs in there. I'm gonna just start catching them. These are real splashy because they're so much bigger. There you go. <laughs> you see me catch him like a, <laughs> like a slips catch. And there's the colony. That's a lot of bows, my rainbows. Lots of girls here. Okay, so now we're gonna look at some of the best rainbows I have in the brood stock. Look at that male. That's insane, all right, what do you mean to take? There you go. Look at this one too. This is as good as they get. I mean, in the, after, in the mornings, they're gonna look so much better. But like, look at the colors already. Okay, here, let's stop stressing them out. There's a girl, so you can see the difference in colour. Like the girls are a little bit less colourful, but still on these Bosmanis, or Bosmanis, <laughs> they're, they're amazing. This is the biggest male there, and there's a little girl there. We'll go get the turquoise, and then that's it, basically. We'll label the, these tanks, and they'll be good for the next 10 days or so. And then here we have the turquoise. They're super cool as well. They look really good when they're flaring. There's only one breeding colony of these. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna write down the times, like information on each tank. So I'll write down like the species name, so Bosmani or Bosmani, and then I'll write the introduction date. So I'll write down the 14th of October, leave them till the 24th of October, and then do the same thing until I've got enough Bosmanis, which might not ever happen. So I'll leave the eggs in the other tanks. They're gonna take like two or three days until they're all hatched, or you know, it'll take like a week until they're all hatched, but two or three days until we see a lot of fry, then we'll kind of end the video there, but I'll show you guys that soon. Okay, so it's now been a few days and we're back with our rainbow fish. And as I said, we have some little babies starting to swim around. In this tank, we probably have like 30 or 40 that have started to hatch out and are actually swimming up the top. There's gonna be heaps more coming out in the next seven days because we're only three days after the removal of the adults. So there's gonna be heaps and heaps more building up in these tanks. Each one of the tanks has some rainbows in it. I'm just looking at this one in specific. They all have a ton of rainbows in them. I'm gonna show you guys how I feed them when they're this small because you can't use baby brine shrimp or other commonly used fry foods for your fry. You will need to use them at some point, but to start them off, I like to use egg yolk. So you can see here, this is just like boiled egg yolk. And I literally will take a container and I'll just mix it up into a milk, as you can see. And this is what I use to feed all my really, really small fries. So especially the rainbows, they get this once in the morning and they get this once at night. So I only do it twice a day and it works really, really well. I feed this for about the first week to two weeks. 
and after about seven days I start introducing baby brine shrimp as well. So I'll feed egg yolk for two weeks but for the first week I'll only feed egg yolk and then during the second week I'll feed egg yolk and baby brine shrimp. You'll need to hatch out baby brine shrimp to breed these guys. I mean there's ways of getting around it but if you want real success you're going to need to learn how to do it. It's just so so important. So what you're going to want to do is just take the mixture, get a little pipette or something like that, you can even just pour it over the top and don't overfeed but just run some drops over the top and as long as you've got some circulation in the tank we've just got a sponge filter and some spawning mops it's not a very high tech setup obviously as long as there's a bit of circulation just mix it into the water and get those particles swimming in the water what this is going to do is just you know go through the whole water column and there's tons of little tiny itty bitty sized pieces of protein for these guys to eat as they're moving through the water they're going to try and eat it and Something that would be better to feed than this would be Infusoria, but I don't have any Infusoria. So this just works out for now, but this works really well. I love feeding it. I never really have any troubles raising my rainbow fish fry when I use this stuff. So this is actually a really easy fish to breed in my opinion. But yeah, I'm glad we had some success with it and I hope I could teach you guys how to do it. And I hope this video was informative and entertaining, whatever. But yeah, I'll quickly show you some montage of like the babies and that'll be it. So yeah.